Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Afternoon FM. Today, I am joined by Michael Fells. What's up? Filmmaker extraordinaire, Bronx native, maybe mm-hmm. not Bronx. <laughs> well, Mount Vernon native. Close Mount Vernon Bronx. native, close right, uh, adjacent right next, to the Bronx. Right next to the Bronx, right next to the Bronx. <laughs> <laughs> Thank yeah. you for joining me today, bro. Thank you for actually commuting all the way from Mount Vernon, bro. It's, yeah. It's, uh, so, yeah. yeah, it's worth it. It's a great studio. It's a good place. Good, good to be here. Yeah, we've been chopping it up for the past half hour or the past like hour or so, going over filmmaking, a uh, little bit, a little bit of life, a little bit of everything. But we're gonna go into this man's, uh, this man's background, his projects, his love of film, mm-hmm. some of the gigs he's worked, mm-hmm. uh, the war yeah. stories. <laughs> Michael, thank you for joining me, bro. Exactly, exactly. So tell me, tell me a little about yourself. Tell me, like, where you're from. Um, so, you know, uh, I was born in Manhattan and then uh, was grew up in what, what's called Westchester County, which is right outside uh, New York City. It's right outside the Bronx. Um, you know, it was really nice uh, growing up there. It's, uh, I went to college in Long Island in Five Towns College, and I got a film degree there, which was really an amazing place to go because you really got your hands dirty on like day one and it's really Long like Island. yeah in Long Island really? um, exit 51 on the LA oh, basically right. yeah and it's it just like you know it's in Dix Hills um, but like this place is was just like it's like whatever you brought to the table and willing to put in like time and effort wise like you were able to get out of it so right. you know that's actually so. one of the biggest principles that I learned from one of my mentors man was the energy you put in is the energy you see yeah it's always yeah it's always the case in all things bro. exactly all exactly things. yeah so yeah i mean like it's something where like i remember there's like limiting stuff uh with cameras and whatever and i was just like well i'm gonna buy a xl2 camera and like i'm gonna be able to do what the seniors can do and i did a lot of camera work for people and really made sure i was getting my hands dirty and and working as many films as possible and it just like so camera work was your first love into well, it, was, it? It was my first love, but it's something where, like, I felt a lot more passionate about, like, the direction and producing of it, and, like, writing than mm-hmm. anything. So, like, I kind of moved away from camera work in college, you know, from, out of, like, post-college, so that, you know, I can really do and specialize with, like, what I love kind of thing. Um, but there's not that many, like, there's only one director, so, like, I still had to do, like, lighting jobs as well for like for people and you know i was lucky enough to like work uh to get hired by this guy luke matheny um who went on to win an academy award right. and like and this was what an, uh what what, what project he, he made god uh god of love and like he had just finished god of love and he's working on his girlfriend's senior thesis mm. um and you know he hired me and he was the ad on it and like i learned a lot watching him and uh it was just a situation where like i was like oh ad is like a fun job you know and you're running a set you're doing a lot of fun so like i learned how to assist and direct a lot first ad or yeah. second ad we For, found out yeah. earlier that there is a very big <laughs> big, big difference, difference. Yeah. so if people don't know like so the director's there to kind of like talk to talent and get asked like do you want blue or green like that type of stuff you know finalize some stuff but like the ad like literally the assistant director literally sets up the schedules like they have to be the shield to the director to like make sure everybody is just like running on schedule like you gotta like you have 45 minutes to do makeup and, and they're like i need an hour and you're like i need you have 45 Five, that's it you know and if you're a good person like me you don't yell you just communicate well and, and like that's the way to go but I've been on sets where it's like they Come feel on, motherfucker. yeah they're not <laughs> yeah. and you're like all right this is a lot you know uh, so I've always like tried to have that empathy of like let me show up the best way and keep things organized and good vibes you know kind of thing but uh, you know some there's only so much you can do in a day, you know? So you got to just do the math sometimes. <laughs> I'm going to interject with a story. My, yeah. friend, my friend Susan is, uh, you'll like this shit, bro. Yeah. Look at, uh, my friend Susan is a DGA. Like, yeah. Uh, she's a union, but she's a first yeah. AD. Mm-hmm. She's a very, like, fucking, like, strong mm-hmm. fucking Dominican woman. You know, yeah. She's, she's this shit, yeah, she's awesome. So she, had, she was telling me a story about how she had, like, beef with Bill Murray. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a great story. <laughs> so fucking, uh, I don't know yeah. what film it was, but she was on a film with Bill Murray, right? Yeah. And Bill Murray 
when he gets, uh, one, he's like impossible to reach and he has this, this whole fucking mythos that he's mm -hmm. developed around himself. Like, yeah. Like, and he does these weird appearances, whatever. But yeah. this whole mythos of Bill Murray. But Bill Murray has been doing this so long. He doesn't want any of the money. He's like yeah. just there for the fucking project. The art. So, yeah. But when you hire Bill Murray, Bill Murray comes with all of his people. Mm -hmm. Like you have to hire Bill Murray's people. Like yeah. it's not just you hire Bill Murray. Yeah. You have to hire his makeup person. You hire yeah. his fucking personal assistant at Swansea. Yeah. So uh, Susan's working to get Bill Murray. And uh, I forgot what it was. I think it was like her fucking. Uh, it was like his makeup or something. Mm -hmm. It's like oh, you know, it's like yo, we gotta, we gotta wrap it up. Come on, let's go, 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 go. Mm -hmm. Fucking. So I don't know. They like. I think the makeup person was like, you know, whatever. So then, uh, what's it called? Uh, so Bill Murray gets pissed off and he's mm -hmm. like, yeah, you can't talk to my makeup person like that. So then he goes to the fucking uh, to the producer and I think tries to get like Susan fired. There it is. And Susan has to go through. But shout out to the fucking DGA, bro. Yeah. When you're a union person. They, they like, protect you, know, you. You pay the dues and shit. <laughs> you know, get me wrong. They can quit yeah. it up, but it's like it really is insurance. Yeah. So fucking, um, she didn't get fired on it, but she's yeah. got like beef with Bill Murray. So when Bill Murray got like the the sexual assault allegations oh or whatever God. bullshit, yeah. Yeah. like and Susan was just like. Just eating fucking popcorn. Like, <laughs> <laughs> just having a long sip of coffee, looking at Terrible. the newspaper. It's just hilarious. Yeah, it's complicated. Shout out to Susan, guys. See, <laughs> I, see, I'm non-union, so it's the Wild West. Oh, yeah. Bro, it is the Wild West. Yeah. And, like, that's why I try to, like bring as much as I can organization to the table and that way like people can have fun then because you know what you're going to do what's the shot list like you figure I usually like when I do either directing or assistant directing I usually am also a producer on it I do casting as well so like I try to like literally like make these you're short all, films like try to make these short films like really bring them to life and bring this expert expertise but like literally like it's still not just all over the place because it's something where like it's still specialized where like then there's like you'll apply to jobs and they'll be like i need you to direct it shoot it edit it and do sound and it's like that's everything that's yeah. how do you expect one person to do everything yeah, that doesn't nah, make sense bro. that's not how things work you know delegation so is like necessary yeah and i, I like bringing show. good teams together good people like i have my core people i try to talk to you know so it is what it is but like talking about, like the chaos of like when i, I remember ad in college we did a, a, civil, a civil war movie it was like 40 extras on one side 40 extras on the other side really? they're shooting like they're sh quote unquote shooting at each other it's at about two brothers that are on opposite ends of the war and like it was twins that were the directors co-directing really? and they would get like a little like argument sometimes and oh, i'm ad and i'm like this is a lot and i was like but like we got through it and i was and it was film stock too so it was complicated Wait, you were shooting film yeah. a fucking civil war movie on film stock yeah 80 extras bro? It's, it's so insane man. what so, like what how was the fucking budget for this their their, their family like was reenactors so they got all the reenactors to come for free mm. which was like insane and i think when you're independent oh, dope, whatever you have you got to bring to the table you know yeah, so it's like yeah. you whatever what you, your family owns something like a restaurant or that whatever they have you got to figure that out for your script you yeah. know kind of thing and bring it out like i write and i tell people like don't write crazy fa like fantasy yeah. high fi high sci-fi fantasy that you can't do Dude, you robots write, walking like, around like you know like you're not gonna be able to afford that just do like if you single can get location dude. i learned from this on one director like the best thing is if you could get single location two three people in a room talking to each other and then like, one leaves now that you don't have to solve all their problems there just needs to be an interesting conflict and like you know see that there's a big divide now or whatever mm. it's never usually going to be reconciliation like you know but it's something where uh yeah that it's like a really cool way of doing it so like when i made my six films in the pandemic like which was a lot people it's weren't doing anything films during the pandemic. yeah Damn. six i did six short films and it was literally like one is in a um, peak skill film festival uh july 29th actually um but like that was a big undertaking. I shot it all at my house and I knew like the location. So I just made it like, okay, we're gonna shoot Monday, like each day of the week, we're gonna mm. keep shooting. And we made sure that like we got everything done. All the gear was like in the special spot. Like it was like, there wasn't this travel back and forth or anything like that, 600 locations, you know. So it was literally just like a really great time it was the same crew i used a lot of the same actors for certain things you know so it was just like 
you know, and I used my expertise as like a casting director, producer, director, kind of make it yeah. all happen. And like my AD passed, to like be able, like, yeah, we can organize this, like it's all good, and like, you know, uh, that's yeah. That's the beauty of yeah. this fucking medium, bro. Is that, that's actually what turned me on to filmmaking in the yeah. first place. Was uh, I was a photographer. I still am like, technically, but it's weird. Yeah. I consider myself a filmmaker. Yeah. But I do photography daily. You're both. Uh, yeah, but it's yeah. weird. But I'm like, I'm like, it's I don't know. I'm not like separating. Yeah. It's weird because I feel like I'm separating the two, but I feel like filmmaking is like this all encompassing. Like filmmaking is like the Japanese say it's an icky guy. Mm-hmm. It's like the this is a meaning of life or yeah. a way of life. Yeah. And it really is, man. It's it's been it's roughly ten years. It's been like actually. Yeah, it's weird. I saw the Facebook memory. Mm-hmm. Shout, shout out to Facebook yeah. memories. Fucking um, this week that was like three years in LA. Mm. It was like July tenth. Mm. Yeah, it's July tenth. To, no, today's July eleventh. Yeah, it's ten. Yesterday was three years in LA. Yeah, and uh, it'll be ten years. I've been I've been a filmmaker, like really on the path of like I am a filmmaker and I'm mm-hmm. going to do anything in my power to get them. Yeah. Uh, but I was doing it, man, and like, there was a. I was making music. And I used to make music. Mm-hmm. Um, fucking, I was making music. And I wanted to be a music producer, and I was doing photography. And then I watched like Barry Lyndon, and uh, mm-hmm. I was like, Yo, this is like the most beautiful cinematography. Nice. Like, I was like, these are like paintings. Yeah. And then I was like, oh, this is like everything. Yeah. Uh, it was a weird because I, I found mm-hmm. out when I was like 21. Yeah. That cinematography was just yeah. like photography with motion. Yeah. I didn't know that. <laughs> it was weird. You just like, I don't know. It was like a disassociation. It's, it's 30 pictures per second. Yeah. 24 I know. pictures yeah. per second. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't register yeah. that I was like, oh, this is photography. Yeah. Like, yeah. Multiplied. Mm-hmm. Or and I was like, I think I was a little intimidated by videography as well. I was like, oh, I'm never going to be a videographer. Yeah. And now I'm like, you know, I like, I, I like my entire like purpose in life is to go and get the frames, man. Yeah. It's like, you know, it's just seeing. Yeah. It's but photography is great because photography is like going to the gym every day. Mm-hmm. You know yeah. what I mean? It's like yeah. seeing a new piece every day is, no. is going to the gym, bro. It's like no. you know, I, there's so many things you can grab too you don't oh, have to have a model sure. I, like you I see people like they took a picture of a pigeon in New York City and it's like the most beautiful pigeon I've ever seen yeah. and I'm like wow yeah. that's a pigeon yeah, <laughs> that kind of yeah. thing and I'm like liking it and like the the model other picture I'm like I don't care about that no, like no, you know no, like no, it's no, just yeah, like yeah. it's funny how those things happen sometimes. I love it. I love seeing I love being in the improv mm-hmm. of life yeah. I love being like Every, like uh, mm-hmm. I took a photo a couple of days ago called Everything at Once. Mm-hmm. All right, it's weird because I, I started naming them. It's I actually cool started though. naming them because of the fucking algorithm. I used to just put the link, but then uh, I don't know. I found out that the algorithm doesn't really push them if you fucking yeah. link to other sites. Yeah. So uh, I fucking started naming them, and it's weird because like I don't take a lot of time with them. Everything, everything that I post is made that day. Yeah. It's it. There's no reposts mm-hmm. ever, uh, except for Threads. Threads, I'm retrograding my whole portfolio yeah. because they need to stop making fucking platforms. Uh, I know. <laughs> I, 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 I've done social media for um, a dance company. So like when I'm Which doing, one? I don't do it anymore. In, uh, Central Movement. Oh, right. I, I, so well, that's the guy I, who lives here it, works for Martha Graham and yeah. uh, Dance Effects, and there's a couple theaters in the city. That oh, nice. It's mostly a lot of dance people. Yeah, but I when I saw Threads was released, I was just like, oh, I'm sure every single like major like thing in the world like company is just like oh no <laughs> kind yeah. of thing because like at a, there's a point where they're looking at like we're gonna ban tiktok and like people are like oh social media managers we may not need that anymore mm-hmm. and i was like we have threads and it's like and twitter's like in a fight with them yeah. and they're like we need social media managers asap like Bro. it's a whole thing nah, but it, it's a it's, it's a crazy world you know i mean it's you know what the you gotta thing stay is, on your toes you know yeah but you know what the thing is? i like it because it's weird because like I was saying earlier, man, like Twitter, Twitter, Twitter got me into, this place got me back into photography, Yeah. but Twitter got me back into, uh, like consistency. Yeah. Like, like I would do photography per show and I'd like wait for the show to come here and like, you know, I do it and then like, mm-hmm. you know, I do photography and I post it on like. Mm-hmm. Instagram story like once in a while you know what I mean I didn't really know what I was doing yeah uh, and then I got into Twitter and then like I started to like slowly build an audience on Twitter like I said like I was saying yeah. earlier man like I had no idea how to use it for like eight yeah. years and uh 
now there's just this huge community of people yeah. and people are like just like so out to like Alessandro and fucking Anthony if, I don't know if you guys ever listen to this shit but um uh, yeah man there's like a huge like this is like yeah. it's a very supportive like mm-hmm. internal community they, they everybody comments on each other's shit yeah. they like each other or they I work, share it's great in terms of Twitter um, I worked on something called Generation Loss which was with like Rambo and he he Rambo. organized it. He's a, uh, a Twitch. He's on Twitch and oh. like YouTube and stuff. And it's a bunch of people. Like it's I'm 36, so I got on the set, and it's like they have like Valkyrie and Saikuno. Which oh, those people have like four million subscribers, and so like they're big, yeah. huge, like in the gaming industry. They had like a bunch of so many people. Uh, Slimesicle, um, uh, just it was insane, and it was just like. I also had to act in it too and it's like they they literally like did three days of it and we were like number one trending on Twitter which I didn't even know was a thing <laughs> like, and yeah. then I'm like oh wow cool so I realized like the outreach like that you can get and really? it's like you have 50,000 people watching your thing 60,000 people watching your thing live oh, it's just like that's that f- I felt very seen in that moment like in a way that like Your maybe maybe seen. theater people do like I think with film there's such a delay like we're filming something yeah. and it's like I'm literally getting the attachment theory the movie into film festivals now and I filmed it like two years ago yeah. almost like so it's like because it, there's that editing process you're applying to film festivals when is it actually happening all that stuff you know but um naming stuff it's like i think that's cool that you're naming your photos like that like elevates it a lot and like i think you're able to probably it experience is, it, it attaches more. you to it and it yeah. makes you re- realize why you took the photo in the first place like yeah. sometimes i'm just going uh, like yeah. you know like some you know what it is man it feels like uh you ever play NBA Jam? <laughs> Back in I the day. Yeah, I have, a, yeah. You have an NBA Jam yeah. arcade thing. Yeah. So, like, sometimes, you know, you go up close and you're dunking. Mm. Mm-hmm. This is a weird-ass metaphor. <laughs> <laughs> weird analogy, okay. For, for photography. I'll, like, I'll walk with you down the road. No, it's, it's okay. all good. I, 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 I know where I'm going with this. Okay. So, like, sometimes you're going up and you're dunking, right? And then, then I get, like, these beautiful close-ups. Like, I, yeah. like, I had this crackhead. Mm-hmm. a couple of days ago her name isn't Maxine there's another one yeah. named it Maxine um it, uh, <laughs> it, uh I was out I was hanging out with my little cousin and I was mm-hmm. getting a gyro and this mm-hmm. crackhead like came up to me and was like like baby you, you don't got like an extra like dollar fifty a dollar yeah. I'm, like, yeah. I'm like sorry he's like he's like man he's like I'm, sh- I'm short like a dollar and I, I don't want to suck his dick yeah. I was like Jesus Christ <laughs> I was like uh, I was like I like, I'll give you a dollar, but I, I gotta, I have to, t- I was, I, I, I yeah. thought it sounded weird as fuck, I was like, I gotta take a photo of you, and she was like, alright, and then she did it, and I had like this like bodega lighting in the background, yeah. and I got it, and it was just like, the lighting just like hit her face like perfectly, you could see like, you know, the sweat, and like, you know, trying to like very smile, real. and like, you know, like, yeah, it was a very real yeah. photo, that's like a dunk. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> like, right. Uh, well, it's like like things lined up for like a very authentic moment. Yes. You know, yes. That's thing. like a dunk. Because if you're if you're literally like directing that or casting that, you're talk you're gonna cast somebody, then get a makeup team, do a whole thing, wardrobe that's to get that look. Yes. Where you're like you're and not. Then you're, I don't even like. You know, gonna, what's crazy yeah. is we have this studio. I'm, really, I'm not really much yeah. of a studio photographer. I really yeah. like like I don't have songs. Mm-hmm. Like I have like jams, and I'll come up with a tune as yeah. a jam. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And it's there, and then it's gone. Yeah. Like, it's this. It's the. I'm going to Burning Man next mm-hmm. month, and it's like this. This process of like they build up this huge structure and they yeah. burn it down. It's this cat. It's yeah. like the sand castle mm-hmm. of all this shit. And when yeah. you realize that this, this is coming in and the mm-hmm. tide's gonna take it away. Yeah. And you know what I mean. Anyway, I'm gonna keep it's going like, with the NBA Jam thing. Okay. So yeah. that's dumb. Yeah. Right. And then you get your regular little two pointers, a little rule of thirds. All right. Here. Yeah. It's like we're right here. Here's a little layup. Here's a layup. Yeah. And then sometimes you get one that's like fucking like this beautiful landscape that's like you know and everything seems to like line up. That's like a three pointer. Like yeah. It's a three point shot. Yeah. And then I had one the other day where I was just driving. I was we were, I was in the Uber and this one this one I'm gonna play. It's not actually it's it's weird. Like you'll get the shot. And the shot mm-hmm. will go in. Shot, shot. Uh, fucking, uh, I was driving and I just saw people like, you know, as I'm driving by and I, I got the shot as I was driving. And like, you mm-hmm. know, it's a nice one. It's just a bunch of kids that are on yeah. the corner. 
And uh, that's like when you press B and you're in the whole other court, and then sometimes it just goes in. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, it like, just yeah. happened. <laughs> yeah, but then sometimes yeah. you get air balls, bro. Yeah. It's like air balls. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like fucking it's just taking shots and, yeah. like, you know, playing the game of basketball. Like, yeah. that's what I like about NBA Jam as well, yeah. is it's not like fucking, you mm. know, it's not. It's just a game. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean, you're yeah. gone. it's it's a sandcastle. It's yeah. like, yo, we're just we're playing NBA gym and all we have is this moment. Exactly. And it's the freezing of that moment or the feeling of getting that three point shot. Exactly. And then you just keep playing that basketball. It's with good. Well, I know with like photography, like it's like I had to tell like tell people it's like you're gonna take like seventy photos and like four One or five them, yeah. are gonna be okay. Yeah, like kind yeah. of thing. That's like that's where and then like they're good they're really good there's like that goes on your social media but the other ones are like not no. there you're blind you know whatever it may be uh, I, I like f- the yeah. picking of it the picking yeah, of it the editorial process of it is so fun yeah it's, it's a lot yeah, oh, uh, wedding wedding sucked up <laughs> wedding sucked up with uh, they're good yeah, yeah. like you got alright yeah. like yo I got like you know oh look yeah. at their eyes and you know oh they're having the time of their yeah. life but it's like Doug like I it's just they. everybody wants like they have mm. very very high standards for it yeah I don't really, that's why I really like street mm. photography is like, it's like my poetry I've never done like weddings I mean I was a, I was a bar manager at a wedding hall so like I've seen like all types of weddings and like uh, I've been to all like interesting kind of yeah, experiences but like yeah <laughs> <laughs> but like um I, then I worked with Nikki. Minaj. I was the bar manager, right? And then I, I got a call like, "Oh, you, can we come tomorrow, like 6 a.m.? It's Nikki Minaj." I'm like, "Okay, cool." So I do that job. Really? Yeah, it was cool. Nicki like, Minaj. Nicki got Minaj. Married or no, 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 no. Like I was like, I was still bar manager, and uh, for the weekend kind of thing. I'm in general, I'm the bar manager, but like yeah. literally, like I had the day off, and then I get a call like, "Hey, can you come in tomorrow to do Nicki Minaj?" from a filmmaker friend yeah. and I did and we shot in the Bronx and whatever and I'm supposed to have the day the weekend off uh, on Labor Day and stuff like that and they're like no no we need you, need you to come in and then like I came in and the other bar managers like sat down and did nothing and I was like I just work with Nicki Minaj and Movado like I don't want to do this anymore <laughs> I'm done I'm never I'm done and like That's literally great, literally like that that weekend beforehand like I had um to do like uh, a woman came up that was pregnant and wanted shots and I was just like well I have to legally give it to you because it's, otherwise it's discrimination and I felt bad about that yeah. and then like the, that same the wedding before that there was a person that was literally like I was told by the, the mother of the groom like oh he's you know an AA he can't drink da, 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 da. I'm like legally if he asks for it I have to give it to him yeah. and I was like that's not a fun place to be and like he was good and then he stayed at the bar the whole time and then he literally like <laughs> didn't drink and then the, I'm like last call and he's like just give me a scotch I'm like are you sure and he's like yeah I'm like here you go and I was just like this isn't fun anymore yeah you're like this enabling isn't, an alcohol I, I've already like this isn't fun and like I never was part of like the nightclub scene or anything like that it was just all weddings so it was still good vibes but I was like, this is not, like, I'd rather do full-time film and, like, not have this, like, safety net mm. underneath me or lose jobs that are huge because, like, no, I have to work. Yeah. Sorry, I have to, like, you know, that that type of thing, you know. So it's, like, keeping that fluid schedule is, like, really important yeah. in filmmaking. And um, usually I'm working on other people's stuff, and it was nice in the pandemic to, like, just make my own stuff. Um, talking about naming your own stuff and, like, or... or being able to have that daily thing I think as filmmakers you don't necessarily get that because you have to like there, it's so much is going into those films that you're like getting the, all these teams of people oh, like dude, this all this money war and peace in the bumper car yeah okay. and it, it's just like a lot and then now it turns into Sophie's Choice because like I go to film, film uh, festivals and I'm like well, which one's gonna go? Uh, which one am I gonna nominate to like go in? Because they you have to pay like twenty five bucks, sixty bucks sometimes to yeah. even apply to these things. Film free, and it's like right? yeah, and uh, it's like I have like five, six films that I'm like want to put in, and I'm like this is a lot, a lot of money. Like yeah. so, I have to be like, we're just gonna choose this one, and maybe this too. Like, I don't know, and it's just uh, it, it's a lot, you know. So it's like it, they almost it's almost like discourages you in a way to make multiple films. It's almost like you should be just making one and just like fully just dive into it like one of my friends like he's well you we, learn a little bit on each yeah. one of them bro that's yeah the that's the shit with uh with the photography bro is that mm. like um it's weird for me yeah. because i just got off of a residency shout out to kasha and to josh and lisa malas and uh, i just did uh, we did a mm. seven day residency this, mm. so there's a seven day residency at this spot called gardenship in Carnegie. yeah 
uh, and you get there and you're allowed to use the facility for yeah. free and you know if you have a concept so you have seven days to make the film from yeah. location scout yeah. to screening yeah so um, and you can shoot like, one, like two three days but um, it's like an open jam a little bit everybody can pull each other's res resources you meet a bunch of filmmakers this one animation chick from I think I'm probably gonna, if I do it again, I'll probably do the animation. Um, but, uh, fucking, uh, so, like, we made this film called The Glance. Mm -hmm. And, like, you know, it's pumping it out, right? So, yeah. like, you know, made it. And I, I had to, like, redeem myself because I didn't do one last year. I did one, I, but mm -hmm. I didn't finish within the seven days. And I shot my yeah. two friends' films. And, uh, you know, it was, it's great. And I, I really enjoy it. But, like, I'm, I'm at a crossroads right now because there's, like, little ADR shit that I kind of want to, mm -hmm. like, uh, like, add to it. Like, you know, like, or if I should cut it a different yeah. way. Um, but, you know, man, like, I'm just going to fucking release it. Because, like, I, the thing is, bro, I, I, that's the thing that I loved about the photography is that, I got into the habit of just doing photography every yeah. day. Yeah. And I really and I realized bro that all growth yeah. is just all consistency. Mm -hmm. It really it really just ends up going to be like like going to the gym is the same shit. It's like yeah. uh it's weird. I, I had a weird metaphor this week. I don't know if I said this on the last podcast or whatever, but um so I did this chicken video. Mm -hmm. It's just been on the podcast. I did this video about this mm. fried chicken spot and it yeah. blew up. Nice. Been filmmaking for 10 years. Yeah. My peak to resistance is a fucking... Your legacy it, is chicken. Yeah. It's, I I'm just you. getting chicken based yeah. with my friend at 2 o'clock yeah. in the morning. But I made a stupid TikTok and it blew up. Yeah. And it's uh, it's a very, like, a local blow up because, like, all the restaurants in the area. So, yeah. so I basically, I'm going to, like, different restaurants. So we parlayed yeah. this. My buddy's starting, a, a like, a network. Shout out to Marvin and Bravely and Bravery Studios. See you guys tomorrow. Uh, fuck, and um, we parlayed it into this series called Hood Famous, and basically it's like an Anthony Bourdain kind of show. Yeah. Or like a podcast that's at a restaurant. Yeah. A um, little bit of comedians, cars getting coffee. So, yeah. uh, oh, I love uh, uh, so I'm doing research yeah. on the on the market of it. Yeah. And there's this one food blogger I've been trying to get, I want to get him on the show. Uh, this guy called King Shrats, mm -hmm. and I'm looking at his stuff, and this guy, he's like just eating like white cows. I'm like, and I'm looking. This guy's got like 250,000 people, and he's a Twitch streamer, and he's on YouTube, mm -hmm. all those places. And I'm like looking at him, and I'm like, oh, it's the same lighting, same kind of like format, like you mm -hmm. know, kind of like ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. You know what I mean, like that same kind of like pitchy shit. Yeah. Uh, and then I'm going, and I'm, I'm like, what is this guy? Well, I'm like, so I'm like, I, I get it. But like, I, it's, you know, it's mm -hmm. cool content. It's like the guy's yeah. eating food, but like, what, what is making this guy different? What yeah. is making, like, how is he doing this? And I'm going down, and it's you know, some of our local spots, and he's a local guy. And I'm like, yeah. oh shit, this guy's gonna probably hit the same restaurant that I'm gonna hit. Yeah. And I'm going, and I'm looking at the posts, and it's every day. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, dude, I'm yeah. like, this guy, and this guy's shredded. He's eating mm -hmm. like fucking like 8,000 calories. <laughs> but uh, he's there, and I'm like, oh, this guy is just showing up to work every day. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, dude, I've, I've, I've yeah, been part developing that a lot. Like, mm -hmm. I've done it consistently with the photography, but I've been I'm applying it to like fucking like going to the gym and like other things. But it's a, it's this consistency mm -hmm. of bro show up to fucking work bro. yeah you show up to work every day like you should it's, it's not even cra crazy i mean mm. i'm not like this and shit but i'm like it's not like yeah really insanely like crazy content mm -hmm. uh yeah yeah man fucking. yeah i i think that like with filmmaking part of that is networking because there is that in between time like you'll be on a set and then they'll be like so what's your next gig and it's like i just been working on this gig like you know like i'm not necessarily sure like then there's times like i've booked myself like three six months in advance and it's like you know what you're doing and it sounds great and then people start changing schedules and then you're double booked triple booked and you're like this doesn't this isn't good so i now i'm just trying to like exist in a world that's more like you know, like a month, knowing what, what is, like what's generally going to happen in a month, kind yeah. of thing. You know, and I think that there's a beauty in that because every day is a little bit different. And I think you also like spend time networking when there is time off. Like it's one of the ways I was able to uh, meet you, and it's like just 
being really comfortable with yourself and like you're finding your own story and stuff like that being able to tell that to people um it's Find just your cool tribe, bro. yeah exactly and it, it's just it's it's good and meeting all these creative people it's just like it's you know it, it keeps you inspired and seeing people do it is great like no like i worked like i was saying before like i worked with luke matheny and he won the academy award like that made me realize this is real like you can do things like yeah. that i worked on an nyu shoot it was funny and um i was doing lighting and i i walk up to like the actress we're talking it's rachel brosnahan who's now on miss marvel it's miss Maisel. oh wow and, she, and we're talking and this is way back when and, she, and i'm like oh so what are you doing and she's like oh yeah i'm on the show called house of cards it's coming out now and i'm like okay cool like what's and i, and I was like yeah i have something on netflix too da, da, da. and she's like okay i'm like but it's gonna be a big deal i'm like all right you're like cool because they're, they're usually your independent thing yeah. like she's like no it's gonna be a big deal i'm like all right cool Card. Like it just came, it just came out like was a week it House or two. Of Bards? House yeah, of Bards? and I went home and I watched it. And I was like, "This is good." And she was like, "Oh yeah, season two. I have a lot more, a um, bigger role in it." I'm like, "Oh wow, cool." And then I, I was happy that her whole career kind of like blew up and like she's so big now and has oh, yeah. Golden Globe and Emmy. But it's like, what I think I learned from these kind of experiences are like when you're sitting down with people that have these like giant awards and myth like this mythos about them. It's like they're real people, yeah, you know, and they're usually salt of the earth people. They're not necessarily like you said bill murray has some shenanigans to him yeah um like you know like a lot of times they're good but you, sometimes you, you work with people and they're a little a little bit extra or their team is extra like yeah. you know and it's like you know or they like Nicki minaj came with a big posse of 40 people that like ate all the food and took all the waters and you're like okay <laughs> um what are we gonna do now like kind of thing are they gonna send pas to go get stuff like that would be nice you know or yeah. all right but it's either way but my point is like sometimes like i worked first time i worked on hbo i thought like oh my god this is hbo this is gonna be amazing get get there at four in the morning i think it was brooklyn and like literally like I, they still were slightly disorganized and i was just like didn't expect that that's you could be that level and yeah. still be slightly disorganized no, no. i thought it was gonna be like just like i'm gonna learn so much i know that and i'm like oh no this is like this is every it's just a film set and they yeah. just have more money they just have money to throw out problems yeah and they go like oh we need this light an additional light from this uh rental house and they just send one of the many people they have on set to just in an extra truck to go get it like that's not a real thing on an independent film no, set no, no. there's no like money for an extra light an extra car an extra and person it's like it's definitely pandemic wise it's like you're doing three jobs now like kind yeah. of thing and for the price of one and you're like this is rough this is rough but um especially when i like i produce direct and like cast it's like all right it's cool let's do this <laughs> like kind yeah. of thing you know it's i try to like bring that skill though and like i talk to a lot of like actors that are newer or that like feel like their voice really hasn't been put out there and what i try to do is say okay cool let's write you original monologue then like we'll write you a script that's like three to five pages long you'll get a lead role you'll get an imdb credit um and we'll make something the that works for you IMDb. yeah i know like some people like that a lot people and, love you know, that shit, and it's because you go to a film festival and like you, you have like that 30 minute window to talk to people people are like having a conversation with you and they check your imdb real quick to know if like hey i'm gonna give this guy five minutes or i'm gonna give this guy like yeah 30 seconds oh, kind of thing marvelous yeah whatever it was and you're just like oh cool and it's just like so like i i think i have like 80 80 or 90 credits on Damn, imdb but like it's just like but anyway but it, it's just My it's, buddy it's interesting he does he does these shoots mm -hmm. uh like he rents out his set and like if somebody's like short with money he's like you give yeah. me an executive producer credit there you so go he's like i just have this insane idea oh yeah there you go <laughs> like, like, yeah, people, 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 people do that yeah. and then they they look i know that like i think school of visual arts did that like the head of the department i don't know if i'm supposed to say this the head of the department <laughs> yeah, it's like, uh, okay, it's i, I didn't go to school scale. of visual arts i just worked there uh, this whole back door they, school he of literally arts. like made sure he was an executive producer on like all the students uh projects and like you know they're grad school whatever but like you know okay i'm just feel like it's like but you didn't 
you're adding your name. Maybe in the same way that like you're Steven Spielberg and like they just need your name so that people go, oh, it's you know, oh, yeah, you Steven know that's like, like, like you know like that type of thing. Oh, in the same way, Jody like was yeah, because like if you have hundreds of credits, like there's a high likely of, of just executive producer. There's a high chance that like your name was just thrown on there and you were paid a little bit of money, kind of thing. And that's really it. Cause yeah. it make it like a little bit higher. And, you know, um, it is what it is. You know. Um, you know, I, I think I got yeah. fucking robbed of my executive producer. I mean, for yeah. the for the final cut from the mm. fucking trade of the swine of marijuana paradise, uh, I was executive producer on the mm-hmm. screenings, and mm-hmm. then like the guy started to release it, mm-hmm. and uh, fucking uh, he doesn't like me anymore. So oh, it's falling out. No yeah. longer the executive producer. That's Which is like not even like a crazy title, bro. I I'm not like the producer of yeah. it. I'm just like I fucking like I exactly. got you an agent and they fucking housed you, brick. Literally, like I write. <laughs> one of the things is I you write the contract for the for the people, you know, for my own stuff and for people that are working. Yeah, there's no problem. And I'm trying to woods. like <laughs> navigate like you know how do you benefit protect the client and also protect like you know workers rights because mm-hmm. i'm all about that so i try to do that but i've also been through it i've been through the war stories and like in, in the trenches with people so i know what goes on so like i'm literally putting stuff that that's in there then some people are like you don't have to put that in there and i'm like we do <laughs> that kind of thing like you cannot take away credit from this person for any reason kind of thing if they did one day on set because there's people that have these sort of like egomaniac things and they literally yeah. Yes, like have issues you can't like get in an argument they did one day on the set they get the credit that's it they get their pay and that's Bro, it no you matter know? what like like I had a thing on the last short where I had to act yeah I'm not, I, 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 yeah. I go to acting school and yeah. I, I find it very beneficial yeah. as a director mm-hmm. um, cause you need to just be the difference between mm-hmm. a boss and a leader is a boss is like, all right, I'm you go into the frame over yeah. here, right? I'll do the fucking acting, bro. If yeah. I could do both, I'll I'll do yeah. it. But I'm not a fucking. You know what I mean? I wrote mm-hmm. like for like a, a black kid who's like handicapped. Is mm-hmm. like my character. I can't mm-hmm. be black in character, or yeah. I would. Yeah. But I would be a the the. Twitter would get so mad no, at me yeah, if that's I was not, a black handicap. I, I actually I <laughs> actually tell this to actors. I say like, you know, keep applying to place to, to roles and even if you are Mel Meryl Streep and that level, with all her awards, she can never play Doctor Martin Luther King. Like that's it. I would watch that. Right? Movie, no, but you know, I'm I would the, watch but that. I'm just saying. My point is, like, literally, I know, like, I know it's like, that's a joke, but it's not. <laughs> my point is, like, to say, like, to realize, like, hey, no, like, there are roles that I'm meant for, yeah, and roles that I'm not meant for. So that's one of the re- when I write for people, I try to like incorporate whatever part of their personality they want to present to the world. Because mm. like, there's people that I remember this guy was telling me he could, he was. Um, kept getting cast as like gangster roles yeah. and like that's not who he is he's a sweet guy yeah. you know he's just a tall guy like and that's it and like yeah. and he's like that's not what i want to do you know i would like to do like regular roles i'm like okay cool well, let's write something that's like yeah. speaks to you like what are you passionate about that's gonna come out tailoring more, a you suit know? for the actor i think yeah. that, that's what i kind of call mm-hmm. like the scripting yeah part. like i write a lot for my buddy Neil, yeah and uh fucking um you know, like I write roles that yeah. I know Neil. Neil's like, yeah. he has like, he's my De Niro, but he kind of has like yeah. Joe Pesci vibes. Okay. He's like, what, what the fuck is? He's like, he's like, get your fucking. He's like, you know, like what? You know, One of those, like, yeah. like uh, uh, for the last short, uh, he kind of dropped out on it, and uh, I had to do the thing. Like mm. I had to like, I'm like, uh, but I also mm. kind of rewrote it. But Neil gave the concept of it, yeah. like sort of this in seventh thing. Yeah. He dropped out of it, and on the day, I visited the locations, and Mm. I kind of rewrote, but he gave me this concept of two people on Mm. a bus stop. Yeah. And he still got writing. He still gets writing credit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's still, like, you know, it's like, you don't rob people of the thing. It's not Mm -hmm. like, oh, like, I created the concept. Like, Mm -hmm. I didn't create the concept. It's a lie. Yeah. And it's like, mm-hmm. that shit is, is, is fucked yeah. up, bro. That's like, that's where I like, I, I'll never bring the person who robbed me of that thing back in my life. I like, mm-hmm. he's tried to come back in my life multiple times. Mm-hmm. Like, Cause like, I gave him like, this is how you tell a story. This is a story. Yeah. Right? And this is, you know what yeah. I mean? And then like, you know, yeah. and then you just rob people, bro. It's like, fuck you. You fucking yep. piece of shit, bro. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> there, there's a lot of like, I hate that shit, bro. I think with, with like New York 
there is still usually an up upfrontness to people's like if they're sketchy you can really tell like there's not so much like i think a like a lying or like a sweetness like a false sweetness i think you could tell like when somebody's a like very Shifty. businessman and they're they're just gonna they might screw you over because it's a business like yeah. kind of thing energy and you're like Ugh. you know but um and then people <laughs> that are like very creative and you're like oh cool and like they don't know what excel is like they couldn't expel excel and you could tell that like their energy like i haven't been i don't believe in phones it's like oh, okay well uh, that's gonna be hard to organize a movie then yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. Like, there's so many balance, different man. types of people you yeah need it's you good need to be creative you could yeah. trust dog. exactly you need exactly. to produce that's why i fuck with marvin Bro, Marvin's, yeah. Marvin's my guy, yeah. bro. Everybody's creates their own teams, and it's like so much word of mouth, I think. And then, like, with reels, I think those are really important. It's like I can have 90 credits, but people are a lot of like, hey, let me see what you did, though. Yeah, you really you know? fast. Like, because you're, fast, I, I've thing. explained when I, to people when I'm casting. Uh, this advice to anybody who's an actor like when you're casting and you're under the gun like you have a three minute reel that's great you know how much we're watching we're watching maybe 30 seconds of it and within 10 seconds i know if you're generally right for the part or not because there's certain things that are just like inescapable and now we're getting to now you you're trying to get that 30 seconds so put your best stuff first and then let it go don't go too extra with it like you know, keep your information easy and accessible so we can copy and paste, click, hit you. Make sure it's easy to contact you. Make sure you have social medias, all that stuff. Just so that, like, the casting director that's under fire can literally actually contact you easily and see what you're about, you know? But, um, yeah, and like, but casting is like a really fun job. Um, I do, I do love that. Um, you know, producing and organizing it all, like managing budgets, it makes it like, the real world of it is really cool directing talking to actors awesome acting wise like i've acted for kids for people in in college um because they didn't have people and like it was just out of necessity but then it became like you're an actor you just uh, you just worked on claudio's thing and i'm like okay cool and then it just ends like kind of like snowballed so i did act on people's stuff mm. but then like I was like, oh, I'm never going to do that again. And then we'd be on set, and they'd be like, oh, the actor didn't show. We need you to do – we need someone to do that. And they're like, yeah, could yeah, you? Yeah, and I'm like, okay, jump, cool. Bro. So that happened multiple times, and I've done that. And that even happened on Generation Lost where it's like they needed somebody. And this is a giant thing with, you know, with um, – Twitch streamers have four million subscribers and stuff like that. They have a big budget, and it's like, okay, cool. Like, you know, they they uh, they need they wanted to make sure that certain crew, you know, got a chance to feel a part of it as well. So it was nice to like actually have some not necessarily lines I had to improv, but like it was cool to like be a part of that, you know. And it's like everything like if you close yourself off, like I'm not willing to do that then you're closing off that whole branch of that your life mm -hmm. where like i'm not gonna like create my own resume and go out and like you know hit the pavement to be an actor but it's something where like if those opportunities come up i do them you know kind of thing and it's just something yeah. where, and the understanding i took um, improv classes as well yeah. so like understanding like how actors feel yeah. is so much more organic than just telling somebody stand there and expecting them to know or throwing the book of verbs or whatever the actions like throwing verbs at them thinking like no you have to have such high empathy i think yeah. to be able to communicate um, one of the last shorts i did for a client like i remember the um the supporting actor was like really thankful because like i really explained the like inner workings of this character's thought process and why they would speak like this and that just instead of just being like go like rolling yeah. you know kind of thing and it's just like that level of detail i think and uh you know this introspection lets you communicate better with people you know yeah. so that, that's my whole thing um, the, uh, speaking of which you know the these david o russell this guy who does mm -hmm. american hustle and, mm -hmm. uh, and silver linings playbook yeah there's a scene uh, this is I was I was watching his DGA. I was listening mm. to his DGA podcast. Yeah, oh, sorry. <laughs> like, yeah, sorry. Uh, uh, I was listening to his DGA podcast, mm -hmm. and uh, he was saying like, if there's a sex scene, he'll like go in the bed. I mean, like uh, maybe with, after allegations or shit. <laughs> and, uh, it goes like in the bed, and like it's like you know he'll in like like if it's like somewhat of an embarrassing thing for yeah. an actor or something. Yeah. 
he'll do it. He'll yeah. do it like as a mock up, like where they're not yeah. like, filming or anything. Yeah. But he'll do it in front of the crew to yeah. be able to illustrate, like, yo, like, there's nothing yeah. to be afraid of here. Yeah. You know what I mean? You have I, to be able to, like, dip your foot in the water. Yes. You have to be able to, like, yo, it's not that deep mm. of a swim. Yeah. You know what I mean, come, come with me. It's a beautiful swim. I always tell people, I will never ask you to do something that I wouldn't do. I wouldn't do myself. Problem is, I've done a lot. <laughs> it's like the joke I have with people because I've done like you know like PA. The only thing I really don't do is like makeup, but it's still like you find somebody who's an expert and they'll do it. And yeah, like you listen that's to a very them and say. And that's fine. Like I'm a guy. Like that's the whole. But like at the same point as AD, I if I'm communicating to you and being like, you only have 45 minutes. That's it. And they're like, I need an hour and a half. It's like, well, it's not. You don't have an yeah, hour. Yeah, you and don't half. have an hour. Like, you only have 45, 45 minutes. minutes bro. That look at what you can do in that time and make that work kind yeah. of thing and sometimes that like it doesn't that mean you're going in works, like bro. it just sometimes like there's it has to be this level of communication mm. and some people can handle that and some people can't and then you realize who you can work with better and blah 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 like and the more organized you are the more time you're giving that person to prep and then they, they everybody's able to do their job better mm. instead of this like hurry up and wait kind of like energy that happens on set sometimes but you know it, I mean it is what it is but um, but uh, you know, like it's, it's you know, like they always like in, in film school they mention like that spotlight. Who's the spotlight on at that time? Like who are they waiting for? And people be like waiting for sound, waiting for camera. Like, but, and it should feel like it doesn't have to feel like a family. That's a cool metaphor. I like yeah, that. No, it doesn't yeah. have to feel like a family. And I know that like certain companies would be like we're a family, and like that's, that's not that's, we're, we're coworkers you know like though. but like if you want it to feel like you're in it together and you're all trying to do the best you can because all of your work comes together you could be the best actor in the world but if your wardrobe looks silly it's not gonna work kind of thing you know if your sound is bad you're done like that's people yeah, are gonna shut done. you off seconds in, in 20 seconds if your sound is bad yeah. and that's it and sound people know that and that's why sound people are like i would like 600 dollars yeah. and you're like all right <laughs> well it's an independent i don't care it's 600 dollars. and you're like all right well uh okay you know it's like <laughs> it's a passion part no nope. <laughs> like they don't play around passion you know? don't play they, around they, they, they do their thing <laughs> sound is something i don't do and like if i go, went back in time because i was trying to specialize stuff i would be like maybe i should have like like, should have done something. Yeah, <laughs> like, it's, it's, it's who knew? Yeah, who knew? Yeah. Sound, sound was there. Sound. But um, no, like I love, I love what I do. I think the the stories I was able to tell as well in the pandemic were very cathartic, because I felt like when you're working on just other people's stuff, like you're just, I like would script doctor and make it better, easier. Like we could film it better. Like okay, like you have a driving sequence. Do you want to get permits? Do you want to get uh, shut down a city block? Like yeah. that's a lot. How about right budget, how about we have them pull over to their location, get out of the car, and have dialogue at that point? That's like a big, quick, easy fix. You have that for free, everybody. You have that for free. But literally, like, literally, like, that is going to save you so much money and time and headache. Like, you don't, you know, that's like thousands and thousands of dollars saved just by doing that. Here we go. Boom. So, like, just even those small things Get helping people. Bro. You know, people are, people will write things that are just insane. People like, mm. like, oh, I, and a nightclub, and then there's 40 people here, and then, and then it's just like, do you have home oh, all my friends will come out and i'm like your friend like, and i i hate the moment where i see clients think their friends and family are going to support them and be out there oh i have ten thousand followers i nah, people bro, do you not got like, you got like eight, people, people do not show up yeah exactly you, you got you got eight, eight people. people eight people is not 40 your room you know so that's my whole thing and casting wise we're working on crew casting wise i'm gonna get you people like we're gonna you need background people i got you like we did one thing we needed like 70 extras or something and i was like we can do that i can do put in the work but it's something where it's like don't rely on your friends and family to yeah. make your film like it should be like that's like that's the thing that like hbo is hbo money people are there because they're they're paying you hbo money yeah. and when it's an independent thing people are just showing up for the love of the game it's like the they still have to pay well. rent so it's like they, if something happens, like, you know, oh, something's happened with their kid, something's happened with their, their wife or girlfriend, like, they're not going to necessarily show up. You have to do the right thing. So when, when I'm booking actors, I'm getting people that are diehard, that they're going to do it 100%, no issues. Like, yeah. you know, and it's just like, I think it's a lot about how you work together. Like, there's people that might be more technically 
you know technically better or have more imdb credits but it's like as long as the energy is really good on the set that's going to change everything you yeah. get one negative person on the set that's energy goes down yeah. and you feel it you know so even when i'm like telling people we're a little bit behind schedule it's like how you're telling it people how you're making people feel is so important because like there's a big difference if i'm like saying you know um every hour i'm, I'm gonna tell you the time to the director yeah. and i'm like it's one o'clock it's two o'clock it's three o'clock that's a different energy than like we're behind schedule da, 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 and like and being like what are we gonna do like, like yeah. that's chaos and that's like so you have to really keep people it's not babysitting it's something where you're just controlling the energy of the yeah. room and making sure you're using the time the best way because if you have hbo money you can go into overtime and it's fine but whatever everybody gets you know, it's going to cost a few thousand more more uh, per second whatever like not for independent you can't do that season of and that's it <laughs> you know like and there's a difference between union jobs and non-union jobs like the union jobs sag actors there's so many different things you have to do to accommodate and make sure they're you're doing things correctly i try to bring that same energy to a non-union set but sometimes you're gonna like go into like different hours that are in and stuff like that or the actor you know the budget doesn't afford to pay for rehearsals and you know wardrobe fittings and stuff like that and like that's all you know that can be a lot more money on a production it's just really rough so i mean i i i believe 100 percent in like people should get paid for their work i think that you know we should it's all about you know human rights and stuff like that but it's also people are working sometimes in a collaborative environment and really like they want to be there and it shouldn't be like you don't want people that are going to be on a set that are like think they're doing you a favor yeah. and they're bringing that energy to it and no, it's like you gotta, you gotta that's bad yeah. Yeah, that's bad you just want people that want to be there that are good enough at the job to get it done and that going to keep the vibe good and that's really it like even when i get like editors there's some like editor wise i still want somebody with a good personality that i can work with that understands humans because yeah. there's people that might cut stuff really well but like they had to have somebody sit over their shoulder and say do this do that you know but it's like if you understand hu the human element and you can cut some beautiful story together great and i and, like that's so you can elevate what I wrote. That's much better yeah. than like. So I like that type of person. I like working with those people. Yeah, editing yeah. is editing is such a fucking. It's such a weird process. Yeah. Because it's like just uh, having a, having a co-editor and like having that input. Mm -hmm. like, that's like great, but it's uh, it's really like it's really there's like the fine tuning of it where I'm like, oh, wait, this is a yeah. beautiful montage. Yeah. But it's like mm -hmm. just to be able to like not like. You want to be able to, like, disassociate, but you want to be able mm -hmm. to, like, still, like, you know, mm -hmm. you know, it's still my dish. Like, yeah. man's a chef. Somebody else coming in and being able to, like, right, when you, uh, when Experience. somebody, basically able to have that discerning eye and say, okay, do, 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 and do that cut to you. And also, like, that other perspective, because sometimes we either have blind spots or, like, people do have good ideas you should be taking the best ideas from everybody yeah, to make yeah. it the best it could be so you should be sitting down like That's okay cool yeah like <laughs> exactly <laughs> I, I try not you're to edit idea. yeah i try to just be like okay let's you know boop. um or or listen to them and say oh i would i think it'd be better like this if we take their voice over and i'm like okay cool and like let's see what it looks like oh yeah i do like that you know not gonna i'm not gonna be a nazi and be like oh it has to be like this and that's it you know and i think when you're when you have that kind of collaborative energy and you're listening to people's ideas and of the expertise there is the sound person should be talking about sound they shouldn't be like well i think the props no 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 you're sound like yeah. that's it and you're the wardrobe person let's talk wardrobe don't like get into like the script should be like no 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 no, no. the Slow actor can do that the <laughs> actor can come and be like okay improv wise i'd like to do me like well like how okay with are you with this da, da, da. you could have that conversation with them that's much different but it's like you don't want you know the crafty coming up and talking to you about something and it's just like you you're crafty like yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. They, like there's a lot going on <laughs> <laughs> no i'm not saying yeah, that but like just you know yeah, like either way no they crafty people save people's lives they do they, they do, do. But like uh, they, crafty's the most these, important fucking station so what why like, film feels like a family is like you so if you haven't on, been on worked on a film set usually you show up there's a meal there upon arrival six hours later there's there's food again and then six hours later yes 12 hour days <laughs> kind of thing there's another meal so you spent 
all day with everybody multiple meals and that's really it so like somebody guiding along the food process does help because like you don't want to be on a set where you're like okay we're gonna break boom oh we didn't heat up the food yet all right you uh, know like uh, you know it's like it's it's uh, part of that coordination and making sure everybody's hydrated i've been on a brooklyn rooftop like you know five six stories up where it's like hottest day of the year and like they didn't have water bottles working, and i'm like why where are the water bottles down six floors and it's like well that seems like a bad spot for them yeah, like maybe yeah. <laughs> we figured that out like yeah, you know you gotta bring that yeah so I, I try to learn from other people's mistakes on sets too so even if i'm not like the producer ad on that like if i'm just doing lighting or pa whatever it doesn't matter i just do whatever i can literally like what information can i get or i look at it and go well what would i have done to improve the situation yeah. you know and it's not your place to walk up and be like you know what we can do you know you got to really chill i did that on <laughs> H- i did that on hbo oh my god i made that mistake where like the the key grip went up to me and was like well, let's set up these lights like this and this and i was like well that doesn't really make sense i think if it went like this then it would be lit lit better and did it, and i got into like a 30 second like why this my thing my idea is better um and he didn't like that uh so he's like no we have to do that so we set up the way the key grip liked right and then the gaffer comes out two hours later now it's dark and the gaffer's like ah yeah that doesn't work he goes you know what why don't we set it up like this way and that was basically what my Uh, suggestion was and i was just like and then the key grip looks at me and now he's like annoyed with me because i'm right yeah. you know kind of thing so it's like I was better off not saying anything because it's like in a Just union it world it's like you want to not overstep yeah. but in non-union you're kind of like that collaborative environment yeah, it's a little bit more there let's jam let's make sure it's all of us working on the same project let's make it the best it can be yeah. you know like and we understand our craft let's do it so like it was it's you know it is what it is. I would love to do more union work. Obviously, there's a big strike. Writer strike oh, is, yeah, bro. is crazy. Bro. So writer strike. Um, it's weird because like I, I felt like I couldn't promote my writing in this time because even though I'm not union, it just feels like very. Oh, you're overstepping boundaries. No, it just feels like I don't want to confuse people that like I'm. Uh, there's no sort you're of scab uh, thing. Yeah. I'm definitely for like people need to be. If you're a writer, you shouldn't be like I have four roommates. Like you should be able. And I'm you're working on a major show. Like. Yeah. You, like that's a really good thing you know and it's something where like these corporations have so much money it's just like you can't spare a little bit come on you know yeah. and it's like these things should be over in a month like max and it's yeah. insane that they go on so so long I heard TGA came to uh to like some type of midpoint for the errors, yeah. but the writers are still going. Yeah, writers, and then Screen Actors Guild, I've been he- hearing for a very long time, it's like, that's gonna happen. And it's like, I again, we, we don't know... It's fucking ridiculous, and they think yeah. that a computer is gonna be able to write all their shit. Oh, yeah. And it's like, dude, it's a fucking... I mean, like, I, it's like five of you need the You need the human element. You yeah. can't just, like... Yeah. Like, Doug, like, you can make... You can make like it'll generate mm. an image. For you, yeah. But are you gonna like? There's there's like a an element of mm. feeling, bro. Yeah. Like 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 if this song mm. was made by a robot. Yeah. There's no way a robot's gonna yeah. make this shit. You know? It's like like they make yeah. like these Drake songs. Like they mm. make like the AI Drake. Yeah. Yeah. And the AI Drake is like. Uh, it's just taking verbs and shit. It's just a fucking. It's just an equation of yeah. all the Drake songs put yeah. together. It's a word and he's salad. Like, money, money, metro, boom, man, on the mic, on the end, and yeah. on a fight. And you know what I mean? It's yeah. just like it has. It it doesn't mean yeah. anything. Yeah. There's no like. Yeah. Like you resonate. Like people used to resonate with Eminem because he would like air out his fucking dirty laundry. Exactly. With his, like, his X on yeah. the thing. The, the computer's not gonna no, do that. Yeah. And nobody's gonna, yeah. like, I mean, like, you could be like, oh, well, I do is... not want the AI to have to suffer Bro, an like ex-wife. it's like fucking Grammarly. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's like if Grammarly got multiplied, yeah. people are, like, thinking, like, that shit's gonna fucking solve all their problems. There was it's, little, it's good yeah. for, like, information. Yeah. I'm not like, yo, no, I'm not, yeah. not AI, but, like, yeah. fucking, like, it's just, dude, like, for things mm. that generate, like, a human connection, yeah. you gotta fucking... You gotta like 
Yeah. You can't, like, it's not going to make any yeah. sense. Even if it's a, like, a business email, sometimes people can, like, clean it up. And afterwards, you got to do something with that. You got to clean it up a little bit. But, like, I'm not for it. But I've seen people use it. But it's something where, like, I remember one, two, two jobs in the last uh, few months that the people mentioned, they're like, well, because, like, you know, they know I'm a writer. And they're like, well, we're going to run it through chat GPT first. For, and then I'm like, and then we're gonna see like what how much we need, and I think I understand that, but at the same point, like I never feared. I look at what Chat Chat GPT do, I had no fear of like that's gonna take my job, yeah. and now it's like it's not that it's going to, it's that people think they don't need, need you anybody. and even like when i and i've encountered that with like casting where people are like i'm making my own film i know what i want great but it's a lot of hours and time to actually organize those people put them in a room and have them in different time slots like do you want to do that and then it's like the discern disconcerting factor of like there's I, I with newer directors sometimes they're just choosing people that are like very attractive and it, or like or they see a, a buzz where oh they were on um Orange is New Black, yeah. and it's like they were an extra. Yeah, <laughs> they, they, uh, they're building up their like I resume, her, yeah. and it's like somebody with a lead film role in a short film that did well. It's like that's of higher quality to me yeah. than like you are you had a line in Orange is New Black, like you know. But um, yeah, you yeah. know, so it's it's just like it, it's it's interesting. But I I think that um, you know the writers definitely deserve something, and like. So it's oh, the union wise, like there's we're not going to be moving up in the world real quick, the non union people. But um, Screen Actors Guild, they should definitely get what they need, you know. And I think it's just rough for us because as filmmakers in New York, where our main seasons are spring and summer, and then you know, when you hit fall and you hit winter time, it's just like that's the dead time, that's when you're planning more work. And there's a lot of people I'm talking to, like, yeah, well, I'm supposed to shoot a, a feature next month. I don't know if it's going to happen. And it's like, there's a big sense of dread in the film industry right now for people that are trying to like feed families, pay rent, union job kind of things. And I'm mostly non-union world. I like to do some union stuff like props and whatever. I think that's an easier transition than like doing grip and electric, which I didn't, I didn't like that much um, with the lighting, you know, and I've done like, you know, okay, oh, we did an Intel commercial and it's like, okay, this was like, okay, it was, you know, it is what it is. But like, I, di I just feel like we're in a rough time, but at the same point, these things need to happen. These conversations need to happen. I just feel like it'd be nice to be able to have more people included in these things. The DGA shouldn't be super hard to get into, yeah. or the PG. Like, have different tiers. So, like, maybe you're like a newer, newer level, yeah. or I like a apprentice, uh, like, like a so. more like a more apprentice things. And they have that, but there's those limitations. Because yeah. if we're about human rights, let's be about human rights. Yeah. You know, it's not like ten years in the Wild West. Okay, now. <laughs> Now of, of the film or indie film yeah. and now okay cool now apply like like, like can we exist like yeah. how are you like you just came out of film school you have however much debt depending on where you went yeah. you have a do you have 60,000 leave me do to you some have, fucking water my right brother. this is crazy yeah, yeah, yeah. do you have a, a few hundred thousand in debt like and then you're being told like okay yeah we're not gonna pay you we're gonna pay you a hundred da a day da, 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 da. for IMDb years for years and, and a slice of pizza you know and then you're doing that for years and years and it's just like it, that's grinding that's yeah, grinding yeah, so like I think with filmmakers we have to explain that to our partners as well like what this type of life is that this is kind of a vocation like we're called oh, to do it life, bro. It's and it's our, yeah it's our lifestyle it's, it's literally like who we are but at the same point like what was inter interesting that uh, Luke Matheny the, that Academy Award winner had said was like his wife and kids was the most important thing to him yeah. not the academy award and taking that information and absorbing it i was kind of like well relationships are important too like let me make sure that i'm putting information oh putting that into my life yeah. as well and not just like just being like a workaholic and that's it or like just networking and that's it like there are still other things that are important in life you know um, so you know it's a, it's a really you got to be a passionate person all around, <laughs> like yeah, kind of thing, bro, to yeah. do this. And and under, there's you so have many personalities. You to accept it as a lifestyle. So yeah. Actually, we went over the, the earlier. We were talking about the energy. You put it as the energy you see. As the, yeah. As, uh, as my mentor, he had a. He's actually my partner. He's my Russian brother. But uh, <laughs> and he uh, was like growing that toy. Uh, but 
the other one was uh, it's not a job it's a lifestyle yeah you know what I mean mm-hmm. that was, a, that was that, it was like we, it was a moment where I was doing my own farm and uh, mm-hmm. you know and we were there we were just like I think we were just hauling dirt up a hill yeah and uh, we stopped because it was like hot as fuck mm-hmm. and we were just sitting there I remember like it was me and Alex and we were just like sitting there talking and then he was like yo he's like he's like you know he's like dude he's like you can't get like you know like discouraged about this he's like the reason I do this is because uh, he's like I love my lifestyle mm-hmm. he's like he's like this is not a job for me this yeah. is my life he's like, mm-hmm. he's like so he's like it's just not a job it's a lifestyle yeah and uh it's really stuck with me in a lot of things and it's like it made me reevaluate when I was growing because it was like I was there like you know I was in the middle of the woods but I'm like reading screenwriting books I'm yeah. trying to make a thing yeah. out of like being able to make film no matter where I am yeah. that's, that's the beauty of writing uh, is that you know you're able to just submit stuff and technology but like uh, yeah man fucking that, that shit resonates really heavily you have to like it's a sacrifice. This is a lot of, you know what I mean? It's it's mm-hmm. a lot of nights where you're leaving at like fucking two o'clock in the morning and you gotta be there at like six. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, uh, like I'll explain sleep, to people. Sleep deprivation is a huge oh, thing in the sleep? fucking. Uh, it's like we get like three four hours we're like yeah that was good yeah, <laughs> yeah that was fine like, oh my god it's like do i get a, he's like that's nice you know like yeah like five hours is like where you're usually at because like i mean some we do it to ourselves too because we want to like also like watch that we want to stay on top it's of like wild. netflix and then and, and we like all entertainment we want to have a social life and like so we, we got our sleep there for deprivation from uh <laughs> from from our lifestyle but like you know um there's that joke of like you know it's like coffee and a cigarette is your breakfast <laughs> yeah, bro, you know uh, like uh, and it's like i don't smoke cigarettes or anything like that but like uh yeah i mean you see it and it's like you know that's that's sometimes how it is <laughs> you know it's real life it's a great scorsese quote where he was saying uh he's like what's the hardest part of filmmaking and he was saying getting out of the car <laughs> uh, yeah he's like you know right getting out of the taxi that's uh, the hardest part of it yeah, I it's feel like that. you know, it's like yeah. this like really rough ass life, but it's yeah. like uh, if you're there and you're out of the damn car, yeah, you know, you're there. You're there. Like it's let's like, let's make it happen. Let's yeah, make it let's happen. do it, bro. I what I felt like with these last films that I did, or like my personal stuff, um, it was like. I'm happy to be there, you know, kind of thing. This is what I want to do. Like, I know I like philosophy and stuff like that. So, like, there's um, the myth of Sisyphus, and he's, like, cursed to push this boulder up the yeah, hill, yeah. you know, and then watch it fall back down again. And there's a little bit of that with yeah. filmmaking, where, like, you are f- have to feel, like, with, with the philosopher Albert Camus, he says, like, imagine Sisyphus happy. And it's, like, in my mind it's like you have to be like I'm happy to be doing this thing I'm happy yeah. to be filmmaking this I want to be pushing this boulder up the hill and like there yeah it's gonna be like we just finished that short film or that commercial or music video or even feature and now I have to find another one alright cool let me walk back down and push push another one up it, but it's like you are happy doing it you know like and that's and there's moments where you get to look you're at the top of the mountain you get to look and go well, look look what i did that's cool Four and then you have to and, the and, then, and then you walk and then you like then you walk like, back down and you're like all right okay like, cool it, let's, let's go. go do it again let's like kind of thing really nice you know view. and it is you know and i think we we don't get there's such a delay where you're like waiting in a year two years to get see your film with friends and family but not just that with other people that are just a real audience because you actually got a film festival and it's just like that's that there's a lot of patience to it you know the film commissioner on to it yeah that's what i said that's what i had the film commissioner on the uh uh, he's really cool, bro. He's, uh, he's also a photographer. Mm-hmm. And he like recently got back into it, and he was like very, very supportive of it. But he was like, um, he uh, he throws around this hashtag creatively sane. Mm-hmm. So it's like yeah. this uh, this bridge between these like two year projects because it is. Yeah. You know I mean, it is like these fucking like you know like it took me like two years to just finish an animation of a yeah. damn script for a yeah. Island. Like, I can't make the damn mm-hmm. script. Yeah. It's like I need like an animation. Board. Yeah. So he has this thing called creatively saying. So it's like you find these. Like this is this is a byproduct of it. It's mm-hmm. like you know I can I can do my podcast. And yeah. Be here and I can. Yeah. You know, enjoy this. And yeah. I can savor this moment and like photography is like yeah. my daily for it. Yeah. It's those those things keep. Uh, the two years mm-hmm. feeling. You know what Better, I mean? Better. Yeah. Of like oh well, here I am, yeah. rocky like a hurricane. 
Yeah, I saw know? something that was great, and it was like, write a good script. People are not seeing their their families and, and friends because they're on your set. There's probably somebody going to get divorced because they're not. <laughs> oh, shit. They're not <laughs> there in their marriage, kind of thing. So write a good script, and I was like, it was like a meme, and I was just like, damn, damn. So sometimes you're just scroll- <laughs> sometimes you're scrolling, and all you want is like a cat video, and you're like, that was a lot, you know, that, that's a lot, <laughs> that's a lot, and it's like, I think you do have to have that responsibility as a writer to write something that is good and like entertaining, and you know, there's times like you know you're doing a collaborative thing, you're like, yeah, cool, I'm down to shoot, but like you still want things to be of a certain quality. It, that doesn't mean like everything needs to be on the best camera only, and the, the, those type of people, I get it. Fine, but at the same point, like you know, it, it, you got to use the tools of what you have in front of you. Yeah. You know, and then don't blame the gear. Like you can write a really good script, and like, and, and like with two people in a room, you don't need the flashy robot sci-fi. Yeah. You know, aliens coming down, kind of thing. Like. Reservoir you, Dogs is just the you know, warehouse. Exactly. Dude. You could write that cool, like crazy script, but like that's something to pitch in a meeting that you know you're you want five million dollars plus for like the otherwise it's like let's do a real story yeah you know? and like let's what's the human element like you know like even with casting is figuring out like you know who who are these people etc like kind of thing as well the the writer should really know that the director should know that so we can communicate and get the right person um it shouldn't just be like you know um i'm all about like tailoring projects sometimes but when it comes down to like regular stuff like you just like, gotta find the right people you know that will yeah. show up but you know, you you if you give the casting director enough tools, they'll be able to bring really good people to the table. You know, so um, with attachment theory, the one that's in the Peakskill Film Festival, um, that is a uh, that theory has that where there's secure attachment and insecure attachment, and what happened in your relationships, and you want to be secure. But <laughs> a lot, most, a lot of people are insecure, and there's a few different types where you're anxious or you're avoidant, yeah. or you're a combination of both. So, and they have different names. What I did was I just sh- did an attachment theory movie where I showed the same actors in a relationship, and what happens if sh- if the woman has um, each attachment style, mm. and like you see, like in s- the secure one, like she doesn't take back the, the boyfriend that was like terrible Mm -hmm. kind of thing with the insecure ones like she's anxious she lets him back in Mm -hmm. and then with the avoidant one she's like well we weren't even in a relationship anyway and like kind of automatically rejecting him you can see that like she was part of the problem of like what was messing that up and with a fearful avoidant they're like a roller coaster they're like hot and cold they don't know really what they want and like they they push pull kind of thing she like kind of like he's kind of like putting her on the spot like what what's gonna happen what are we and she's just like i don't know like let's figure it out but for right let's right now let's be in the moment and they like kiss and she brings him upstairs and it's just like she's settling for physical intimacy kind of thing mm. so i tried to do something interesting that wasn't just another like you know love story or a breakup story or anything like that so like i feel like that was cool to bring the film festivals where like people are gonna sit down and go I think I dated somebody like that, you know. And they would look at themselves and be like, "I feel a little bit anxious." Or like, I, you know, like look at their partner. There might be some uncomfortable rides home, kind of thing with with partners. But you know, it was like it, it's a. I thought like a cool thing to do. And like sometimes there's only so many stories you can tell. And I was like, let's incorporate something interesting psychology. in psychology into this. And like, there, there's a. If you like attachment theory, there's a lot of stuff online. And it's like you know diagrams and stuff like that. But it's not like video. So yeah, I think yeah, it's yeah. it's like a little bit more human element to it, you know, and like so I thought it was a lot of fun to write that, you know, like that was a fun like you know, interesting, unique and I know that like nobody else would commission that unless they were like a somebody wrote a book about that or whatever, yeah, maybe. Yeah. But like they're gonna pitch their book and that book is more of like a self help thing. Sounds like rules you know? of attraction. Yeah. yeah. Hey, watch Wait, I mean, Way many back. years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, but uh, yeah, I mean, like, I, I did another cool one, Sister's Perspective, about two sisters uh, arguing about the selling of their house, at, of the childhood house, after their mother passes away. Mm. And I, I challenged myself to write female characters as a guy, kind of thing. And I think it came, a lot of people say that's their favorite out of what they saw. Um, but it, it was interesting, and I thought it was like really got really real and just kind of intense, and like that's a whole different energy. Like that's yeah. then doing that, so it's like trying to write these different stories that are 
quick 10 minute things that are like you see a world and you understand these doable. people they're doable you could film them and they're real you feel something and you're like oh you know i don't i don't necessarily have a a, a brother or a sister that i know of because i'm adopted but like uh I've, I had a cousin that lived with me and like so I do feel a little bit of energy of like what it's like to have a, a brother or sister but it's like that type of energy of just like what what can you incorporate in from your real life and put that in there um, my, my family's alive as well like there's no this isn't a story that like I'm Less taking from my own thing yeah. so but it's still something where like what vibes can you take from it where like if there's an, a little bit of animosity between people like oh i can take that vibe so like yeah, you know like yeah. this person's like your friend your family but they're this person's a little pompous yeah. you know thing. you guys have like little gritting so like she comes in the older sister and is like oh you know you're so lucky you don't travel like the the airport was a, a nightmare and like that type of like snide little things that were just like that's good writing like yeah. in, in my mind where it's just like it's not a fight it's like this subtle like little, passive, passive aggressive like quippy example. things yeah. where it's just like just from the from the gate it's just like oh <laughs> like yeah. kind of thing you know and it, and it's funny seeing the two different personalities as well like i see it when i've seen people watch it like people feel like more connected to one or the other kind of thing because they have uh their own that's the beauty of writing man yeah. is that you're just you're like you're like kind of like a sponge for conversations like, yeah like, like uh tarantino would just say it's like sometimes it's like i just go to a diner and just yeah. listen to other people's conversations yeah Mm -hmm. It's like the photography of the writer mm -hmm. is to like listen to that dialogue and see yeah. how people are like truly. Yeah. Yeah. So your shit's not like, well, where did mine go? Yeah. I went to the store. <laughs> I tried one that was really unique. That was just like, I tried to show what how lonely it is to be in like the city. Mm -hmm. So I have like two people are in kind of a situation ship. She's in her apartment house he's in his apartment house and they, you know that sh he's trying to like put pressure on her to be in a relationship and she's like i'm not sure what i want and it's just them talking on the phone in voice notes not even on the phone just mm. voice notes which i think is very real and like if you're in your 20s and 30s like yeah. you're in you understand that yeah. energy um and as they're trying to communicate like multiple other people are trying to hit them up like hey like uh, like she's getting hit up by guys like oh yeah let me take you to this rooftop bar let me take your dance another guy let me take your dancing another guy like all this stuff and it's just like a mess and it's just this show like we have all the like sometimes all these options but a lot of times we're asking we're, we're pursuing people that aren't necessarily interested in us the same way yeah. kind of thing and i tried to make it a very lonely landscape kind of thing as well Beautiful. and like just in the end they um she's like decides to reject a lot of all the all the list of the guys that are like you know and she's kind of thinking like oh uh, you know what maybe i do want to hit him up and then she's like you know what you know, call me but we see the guy like he's already rejected all the girls that tried to like hit him up and his roommate is like forget about her let's go out and he's like all right it's good and like he goes out so now he's not there for her phone call you know kind of thing so mm. it's a show like you know he made a choice now was that a bad decision to go out or not that's up to the audience to decide but it's like you gotta be like sometimes it's you gotta be on the same page in that moment you know kind of thing and i just thought that was like a real world like 2023 kind of like no, I don't want to call it love story, but like, yeah, uh, there's just so many. Like, it's so much like stimulation. It, yeah, it's like, so like, hard to connect it. sometimes with yeah. people, like with apps, with Instagram, with all these things. There's so much connection, but so much disconnection at the same time. Right. So like that was like so trying to tell all these types of stories like was really cool and it's scratching all these itches. So that then when I have to do a different gig that's like a horror gig or something like that that i'm like all right cool like i feel satiated already like i'll do whatever you want like yeah. you're a client let's do this yeah. you know but it's like my stuff is already good <laughs> like yeah, kind of yeah, thing you know like yeah. and I, I did what i, I needed to do I, I got my i i got rid of my demons already you were good <laughs> you know I, that's no, bro, I'm, I'm excited i really i really want to watch that yeah what, uh, what, what film festivals i got did, uh attachment theory is going to be in peak skill film festival on july 29th I think we're showing between six and seven thirty. July twenty ninth, uh, Peak Skill. Uh, Peak Skill Film Peace, Festival. Peace. It's in. Uh, it's in. If you're in New York City, it's in Westchester County, which is right outside. You would need a car probably, <laughs> but it's an all day thing. As well? They were film on film freeway. Okay, yeah, like right. yeah, but it's a little like they're. I think ten a.m. to ten p.m. So like, if you do go, it's kind of like 
it's worth it if you end up going because that's like for twenty dollars you get like an insane amount of movies you know yeah. um I, I think that's what's beautiful about film festivals too you could watch other people's work yeah, you can right. network you learn from other people you're ex- actually besides watching with friends and family that actually show up uh, i went of, to garden state man and it was yeah. weird because like i had a I, I still gotta get them as a guest but they like me up to like be on the podcast and i was like i was there and i'm watching the movie and mm-hmm. it's called like marijuana minutes yeah. and uh uh, shout out to Marilyn, mm-hmm. and uh, I was like, "Wait a minute!" I was like, "I was like, oh, dude!" I'm like, "I'm like, I turn my DMs. I'm like, oh, dude!" I'm like, "I'm like, oh, this guy was supposed to come here in March." <laughs> I was like, "I was like, yeah. oh shit, what's up, dude?" And I was like, yeah. "We were just like nice. started like hanging out." So mm-hmm. It's cool, man. It's it's I mm-hmm. love I love like the scenes in them, man, because it's not like you think it's this huge mm-hmm. thing, this mm-hmm. huge like, oh wow, it was, yeah. It's really like fucking like mm-hmm. you know like state scenes are really like mm-hmm. like fifteen hundred. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like who yeah. are like really making stuff? Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, but then there's like you know, the crew and there's people who've yeah. been doing this for like this thousand, maybe yeah. like I don't know, maybe like three hundred thousand, five hundred thousand. Yeah. Like, I don't know. But yeah, man. Like I've done stuff and went to like. Where I did lighting and I went to Sundance and you're like awesome, cool. yeah, yeah. And like you want to come and I'm like I was the gaffer. Like I don't feel good about like going to Sundance and I mean I did the lighting for this short film like I feel like yes that's you're in the top 1% of the world that's probably only going to happen to you once in your life <laughs> we'll see kind of thing Bro, and it's like gotta, well we'll see well, hopefully right? here, but like you know and it's just like and, I'm not gonna, and then another thing I helped doing lighting like they went to um uh, France, the Cannes, Cannes Film Festival, and they're like, "You want to come?" I'm like, "I don't think it makes sense to fly to France to be like, I do lighting. Yeah. I'm not gonna be in France." Yeah, but you know, yeah, yeah. it's weird. This French company actually did hit me up and was like, "They want to be international," and they're like, "Can you like represent New York and like be part of our roster?" So if anybody that's shooting a film in France needs a something shot also in New York, you could do it. And I was nice. like, "Yeah, cool." So like, it's it's such a we're so con- again there we're so connected so and we're so connected, but we're so far apart. Yeah, exactly. Like, like it's weird yeah. that there's a synergy in LA and New- there's synergy in LA and New York Atlanta's getting a scene and New yeah. Jersey is kind of like the Atlanta mm-hmm. of like New York right now yeah. but like Atlanta's developing its scene LA is just what uh, is like always there Yeah. and like New Orleans had it rocking for a while but I don't know what's going on with the New Orleans scene yet. but yeah man like yeah. New York and LA like it's like it's not that many it's not mm-hmm. a different there's not a lot of different people. It's like still mm-hmm. the same like kind of people. Like yeah. especially with the writer strike too. Like yeah. You go and I was like, you know, I, I've mm-hmm. been following him a lot too because there's like pickets at like fucking Steinway Studios yeah. and shit like that. And uh, man, there's not not really a lot of people. Like you know, there's mm-hmm. like individual people that are like in the WGA, mm-hmm. like that are like you know, mm-hmm. but really not a crazy organization it's not mm-hmm. as crazy as you think mm-hmm. you know what i mean like it's like the active members is like i think in the pga there was like only like a thousand people it's not mm-hmm. a lot of people yeah or some some shit like that like i could be totally like fucking up these, these i would i would say the only advice that i have to new filmmakers is like going to film school is important because you learn everything because the other people went to film school. So that's who you're competing with. The OGs, the old salts, didn't even have the opportunity to go to film school that are in the lighting and in all these different things. Yeah. And they've been been around, maybe they're the, there's a lot of, there's not nep- nepotism, their whole family was like in yeah. it in some way. My father did lighting, my grandfather did yeah, lighting, that type of thing, did. you know, like, and so, you know they know what they don't need the film degree when they're like these six year olds on HBO because literally like they lived that life they yeah. did you know but it's like now going forward like you want that because you learn it you know when, when we're looking to hire people it's not so much that I'm like oh what school did you go to um, I'm more like looking at your resume but it's something like you get that network from it which yeah. is so important and i think yeah. education can't be taken away from you i think it's important you know so i'm i'm all for it personally always that was, that was you know. the beauty of lacc man is that like i went to school in la which is kind of shitty because like you know i feel like some of the montclair kids over here they're mm. like all right yeah but uh yeah. they could all assemble really fast yeah but like you know like i land in la like i'm gonna have to like if i'm mm. gonna continue to do this probably gonna make a film in LA yeah. and I've made films in LA yeah. I've made them in like NorCal and shit mm. but like you know if I'm going to the west coast to yeah. do it like I have a place to go Yeah, you know what I mean like yeah. I have a bed there exactly you know what I mean I have a bed there and I can be like 
Carmen's the fucking yeah. like Carmen's the shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, Faustino is like yeah. a great grip and electric. Uh, it's fucking Jose is yeah. a good drone operator. Al is a cinematographer. Yeah. You know what I mean? Let's go yeah. you know what I mean and then I'm over here and I'm like alright let me fucking make a bed yeah. here too you, know you gotta like, create your support system yeah. and then it's like and then you in a way like you have to have your own support system either with family or whatever job you're having that you're able to handle these expensive kind of tasks like you didn't know going in like you know like I'm I, I got a film degree and like somebody else is like an accountant they don't have that extra ten thousand dollar fucking expense of like of a short film that yeah. they have to make every year yeah, kind yeah, of yeah, thing. Yeah, and yeah. you're like all right this is a lot okay didn't think about that you know um <laughs> okay you know so like you know even with grad school it's like I would have loved to go to grad school I worked on a bunch of NYU grad projects for um, when I was was working uh, a lot of short films early on and it was I learned a lot and I was like I don't have a, you know another few hundred thousand just Yo, to throw man, know, towards that I don't get the thesis I mean I get yeah. the thesis film shit yeah. because it's like alright yo here's the pressure yeah. like make the fucking thing yeah. uh, uh, but I'm like no because <laughs> <laughs> like, 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 yeah. like 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 it's like I'm not gonna like. It's like pay for tuition and yeah. then pay for this insane yeah. thing. Project, yeah. And then some of the fucking schools take the movie, bro. Mm, yeah. Like what? There's part of that. Yeah, that? yeah. dude. Like I no. Th- I think I all the my grad projects I did were with people were amazing and I, I think they're some the most talented people I've ever worked with. The film, bro. There's, but it's just like for me, I can't. I know I can't afford it, and I would not. Yeah, like go like, to my family and be like we need to take our loans and they're like well, I'm not doing that the only you know? reason they're fucking cataloging that shit is that like 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 Scorsese when he would like shoot his fucking shorts right so like mm. when Scorsese blows up yeah. they're like alright we're sitting on a castle bitches yeah. you know what I mean yeah. <laughs> to, a, to be to be accredited they also need like a log to show like hey like this is real like they, it, so many people look at film school as like oh that's cute and it's like no like like it's real like it's a business and I think that's the I think a lot of creatives run into that problem that it's a business and they're like oh yeah wow yeah like, oh, shit, we gotta there's make people money for the shareholders. they are gonna pu- uh, try and push you so hard on the idea of, like it's a passion project and it's uh, oh you know the, the, it's a small indie like where oh you know like I think in uh, movie set memes they were made the joke of like you know respect you know like considering the budget like of the uh, of the movie is so important like well, i forgot what the exact joke was but it's like it's like you also have to eat <laughs> like yeah, kind of yeah, thing yeah. too and like pay your phone bill and all so it's like this weird balance of like doing you just gotta like do the jobs you gotta do and then it's like sometimes we want to make your own project but I, I met people that aren't like me that aren't gonna produce and direct and and uh, write shit, and stuff like that they in. just wanna they, they're they just a writer they're just an editor they you know and that that's not saying just an editor that, as in like that's this a bad is my thing trade. they are a master at that one thing and then yeah. they, that, and they're not happy in the other environments you know so yeah I mean it, it's just like it's such a cool industry to work in um when when i talk to people that are finance people they're very like they're always like i hate my life and like and i'm like <laughs> it's true bro. why don't you try and switch job and like no you know like what do you like to do i like to travel it's like you get like seven to ten days a year to like have off like so you like your life ten days a year that's it mm-hmm. like what happened there like to me like yeah you 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 have you have um uh you're married you have a house great you can have kids great but it's still something where it's like you're you're choosing your what your happiness is and that kind of thing so we have to be happy pushing that boulder up a hill making these films because that's the happiness we're choosing instead of maybe sometimes the financial in the indie market in the union they're doing fine they could be doing a lot better too that's why they're striking but like (laughs) you know because when you consider how much content is consumed by entertainment oh, on dude. social media, on Netflix, on on Amazon, you know, like I know younger people, we don't have cable, but like still, but like on all these mediums, there's so much going into it. There's millions and millions of dollars going into these movies and these TV shows, the and we're sitting down and we're just shit. like we watch an hour and we're like, boop, okay, good, and then like we walk away, and that's it. Like, but that was like 50 million dollars <laughs> like you know like to do that or like and everybody and the, we are in a very weird world because everybody's a critic and their opinion does matter so like if we can know that 
the demographics we're trying to appease to but like that person that doesn't like that film like they can go in and be like yeah i don't like mission impossible i don't like tom cruise boom and like they could put that review works just as good as somebody who's like i love tom cruise he's the best you know type of thing like it doesn't necessarily like and it's so like who you're bringing to the table in your project matters and the scary th- or not necessarily scary thing but it's like who you're bringing in their legacy also matters too well, who are they are on the whole you're saying like something happened with bill murray or whoever well, kind of thing I, kevin I think spacey the were but yeah bill probably still exactly he's fine yeah but like something like kevin spacey Susan, it's on like site. if you're it's kevin spacey like you it's oh, you're not fucked, gonna bro. you're not gonna go now and be like one of my favorite film one of my favorite shows was house of cards you're not gonna do that kind of thing so it's like it's you gotta choose no, people. i don't like I don't do that. Some I, people. I, I sep- you gotta separate the yeah. art from the artist at that point. Like he's a great. Yo, yeah. I, I had fucking Kevin yeah. Spacey's acting class when he was mm-hmm. on master class. Bro. Yeah, that, shit, that was great yeah. advice. Did he fuck that little boy? I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but so like, Michael Jackson made Thriller. What What's interesting when I was in the wedding hall <laughs> yes. and I was the bar manager, whenever they played Michael Jackson. There'd be one person at least I'd hear a conversation like, about like, is this right? Did he fuck those so I, I would tell I would I would I would tell people like if I get if, when I get married like I don't want to have that because I don't want to have that one uncomfortable conversation in the corner over there with somebody with some type the of thing. I don't want I don't want that like the the you know can you separate the art from the person conversation like happening. Do you still on watch my Day? I don't know. I don't. I, I barely watch any anything right now. I'm working. <laughs> I'm literally working and like networking and doing the things I can. Like but I, my friends were like, "You watched this session yet?" I'm like, "I'm yeah. on ri- watching Righteous Yo. Gemstones right now." Uh, how's Righteous Gemstones? It's pretty good. It's pretty good. But like, I'm, like I, I'm getting in a winning time right now. Yeah. It's sometimes you get. It, it's like we're filmmakers and we love movies and sometimes we don't get the time to consume oh, the never. material and it's just like and I remember being on a set where like. Uh, there was we were all in the elevator and the the producer's ringtone goes off it was Mad Men the show there was ringtone yeah, yeah, yeah. and the everybody's like YouTube. everybody's jamming with it and I was like what was that and they're like Mad Men you don't watch Mad Men and I was like no and they're like oh and they're like they're like all right well you could clean up in that room right there and we're gonna finish oh, that shit. and i got like segregated from that and i and i felt very like oh man i got it you got to really stay up on this stuff and i remember going home and feeling like all right well i'm gonna binge Mad Men in a week and i went through like five seasons oh, of Mad Men shit. in a week and i was just like all right cool like your eyes were like, I'm like Fuck it. that's not gonna happen to me again i don't want to be in a room where like something Dude, happened to some me with, classic with culture session, yeah I was at my that's theater. happened multiple times yeah I was at my friend's theater and yeah. I was there and I was like I was like I was asking my buddy Eric, I was like, Yeah, should I get into succession? And then the dude who was there didn't even didn't even have yeah. a conversation, he was like holding like it was like this stereotypical thing. This guy is holding like a huge like platform. He yeah. drops the platform. He's like, Yes, you should get into succession. <laughs> it's one of the greatest shows that I have seen in like, like Like a ninja he chopped from the ceiling. No, I'm <laughs> like, so I'm so yeah. weirded out by how Gary Sanchez Productions mm-hmm. has gone from like the funnier die videos of like <laughs> Pearl the Landlord mm-hmm. to like like Winning Time is like Adam McKay is a fucking genius mm-hmm. dude is yeah. like and the dude shot like fucking film yeah you know what I mean yeah fucking uh, but Winning Time too Winning yeah. Time has like this weird film stock to it man and yeah it's like this beautiful yeah. grainy like Kodak mm-hmm. 70s shit yeah. I'm like oh my god I'm like I'm gonna come just looking at this shit for me I feel <laughs> <laughs> for me I feel like there's like things that you should watch like last of us and whatever things like that that's like culturally there like you should watch and there's things that like even righteous gemstones like you're gonna be like you could put that on your queue and then get to it when you need to get to it and like that's what i felt like with certain things and it's just like when i hear it enough the word and i and i'm like oh wait i should be watching this like all right fine yeah you know like there's times when i have to do so that's like one of those things but like for the most part like i still try to stay up on it as much as possible but it just it gets harder and harder i remember even when i was watching anime back in the day i'd watch tons of stuff and i did a a live action death note fan film that like we won viewers choice in my college it was a great thing they were like do you want to go to comic con with it and i was like like i had the opportunity and i was like no I'm scared, and I, which is stupid, uh, you know, because I was young. Yeah, it's fall. not done yet. And I feel like you know, you know, I should have. Um, 
but then like years later netflix made one and then a bunch of people hit me up that were like did you make that and i was like no like it was just like you know like netflix looked at it and said this is a good medium like you know to tr-. and i think with comics the film i had that course like it's like oh why that sounds like oh, no a fake of course how would that have to and it was a course and it's like dope. and it's like because comic book movies make the most money yeah. And it's something where understanding what that means and the medium of the th- is important. You know, you it's like there's a lot of things that happen. So what I was in that course and I was like, well, there's a lot of mangas and animes that could be done too. And like I had like this whole like side thesis of like we could be doing those too, but it just gets hard because casting wise, like it's you know yeah, what ethnicities and stuff like that. Right. It's just like it is what it. But with Death Note, it was just like it's easy enough to do. Hey man, I but, hated Old Boy. Yeah. The second Spike Lee's Old Boy. Yeah, I love Spike Lee as the director. Twenty Fifth yeah. Hour is one of my favorite yeah. movies of all time. The Old Boy was yeah. fucking trash, but I'm I, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm one of these people that like I can appreciate a Marvel movie, and I also can watch like There Will Be Blood, and like enjoy that yeah. and Parasite. I'm not scared of subtitles, like. And it's funny because I'm watching all these people watch subtitles anyway with in English because they're having trouble hearing. Yeah, but maybe when you put them on a French film. Maybe it's, fuck, yeah, it, then it's exactly they're like, oh yeah, yeah French no, or German. Fuck, fuck Breathless. Like Dark <laughs> the show Dark is one of my favorite shows of all time. It's a German show on Netflix, three seasons best writing i've ever seen and literally like i'll i'll suggest to the people and they like drag their feet and then when they finally watch it they're like wow this is this was really good and like it's and like i think in uh, the director parasite said like it's like if you can get over that one inch wall of like subtitles you're you're gonna gonna open the world world to to you yeah it was just so it was like that's that's where it's at you know i've been trying to develop the habit of bro because i really it's the same thing of like you know like yeah we make films and all that shit going to the fucking theater bro mm. going to the fucking theater yeah. is like yeah you could go like like don't get me wrong man like i'll i'll like shit like succession and yeah shit like that like, you know i mean like that's like you know you can watch it on a laptop yeah. you can watch it on your fucking yeah. tv but going to a theater yeah like, going to like film form and supporting the mm-hmm. those motherfuckers too especially the independent ones bro like alamo draft house alamo i had the season past the alamo oh, and there's a year bro. i saw everything except for like two movies that was like nominated and that was a, an amazing year. Even watching the Academy Award nominated shorts, they have them there. Yeah. Like that's just it's such a cool thing. Bro, I watched Barry Barry Lyndon. Yeah. I watched on, on the, I film. saw that ceiling on, on film, film at bro. Alamo. I saw the movie The Thing, which I love John Carpenter's in the theaters compared to just watching it on like you know like a 40 inch screen 50 inch screen and it's just like this was it holds up this is amazing and in some a theater like that I think brings so much to the table like yeah you can get food at your seat you could get drinks yeah it's like a like, restaurant you can get milkshakes but like you could get drinks you get beer like that's such a like that's a really cool vibe and I you know like that's that's such an interesting their sound maybe I remember talking to sound guy and he's like the sound is there isn't as good I'm like but like where do you get this experience from you know like where you're choosing your seat they have a no talking policy they're LGBTQ friendly like it's just like very like good vibes like that's what I like but then like pandemic wise like they when we couldn't go to theaters it was like then there wasn't that many movies out so it's like the theaters thing coming back to life like it's weird that like you have barbie <laughs> like yeah, it's like yeah, yeah. is like is it's killing it it's gonna yeah it's, it's, it's like this next level thing um good for them <laughs> like kind of thing you know uh it's very smart for them but i learned you know. more from cinema tech than yeah i learned sometimes in film school but i got to see it was weird because i was watching uh with, with john Mm-hmm. Uh, we were watching uh, Lawrence of Arabia. Oh, nice! Uh, it, was, it was like leaving yeah. HBO Max. I'm like, that's leaving HBO Max. I'm watching yeah, Lawrence watch one more time. Tonight. Yeah. So fucking, uh, it was weird because I, I went and I saw. I was watching it on the TV, and it's like, and I watched it in Cinematheque, and it was like the fucking original, like 70 millimeter print. Yeah. And it's like wow. It's fucking brilliant. It's like you see why. Yeah. You need yeah it's yeah like, it's like you see why this person is shooting this yeah. type of film stock yeah because like it's like it's mm-hmm. it's a fucking masterpiece yeah it's like it's this beautiful it's understanding the medium of how it's almost like if you're painting you oh, understand yeah. what, how your strokes and the paint oh, all combine it's the most no. beautiful landscapes possibly mm-hmm. in all of photography mm-hmm. i mean like i fuck with ansel adams bro but mm-hmm. david lean i don't even know the fucking i know the cinematographer but yeah, yeah. It was an, and it was Andy Coates as the fucking uh, mm. 
as the uh, as the editor for that man. Her cuts are just like it's you know, but David Lean bro is just yeah. like amazing. But it was crazy, but it's also that networking and you see the community, man, because you see the people who value that shit. Yeah. And you go to Cinematech, you I've run into the same people all the time, man. Yeah. Uh, uh fucking like I met the guy who who uh yeah. who develops uh mm -hmm. Chris Nolan's fucking mm -hmm. films. Mm -hmm. Like, because, you know, they're all like film stock geeks. You yeah. Know what I mean? Like yeah. so it's like it's a very yeah. niche group yeah. of filmmakers that are like, I will only shoot film. Yeah. Uh, this guy, this is when I think either Interstellar or I think it may be Interstellar or the fucking Tenant. I'm not yeah. sure. I don't actually know. It wasn't Tenant. Um, I think it was Interstellar and it was the new Chris Nolan movie, bro. And this guy had like these huge film stocks. He worked for, I forgot the name of the fucking company. But it's like there's one company in Burbank that just processes mm. all the huge yeah. film stocks, man. And it's just. Uh, yeah. Yeah, man, fucking. Yeah. You see that, and like, also, bro. I, I talked to another shout out to Anthony Edward Curry. He's a uh, he's also a big fan of Roxy Cinema. My buddy is like yeah. head chef over there, so I go there. Yeah. I go there a lot. Yeah. And I saw like uh, it was Pride Month the other month, yeah. bro. And I watched uh, who the fuck is the guy? The guy who did Goodwill Hunting. I forgot his like. Um, Matt Damon Not and Matt Ben Affleck. The director of it is a different oh, guy. Oh, okay. I don't. I don't yeah, remember. The director, the director was. had yeah. this, this uh, good movie though. I love it. Yeah, yeah. He, he did a ninety minute feature, but it's like a really like, nice. Like low budget, like yeah. shit made. The actors aren't. Yeah. I mean, it's like there's like indie, indie pretty, yeah, it's pretty, like an indie film. Pretty, yeah. yeah, it was great, bro. Nice. It was like you know, but it was all like it was yeah. pride centric, but it was like very yeah. beautiful. I, re I remember when I was going all the time back in the season pass days at Alamo I bought like the Alamo hoodie as well yeah. and I went like I remember one week I went um, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday and it was Friday and I'm standing outside waiting to go into my movie and the manager walks over and he's like you gotta get off your phone man and I'm like what? He's like, you're working. Like, you can't just be on your phone. Right. And I'm like, I don't work here. <laughs> you know, like, and he's like, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> and I'm thinking, like, I was like, I could have just, like, catch me if you can. Yeah. Like, that whole situation. We're like, oh, well, I guess I work here now. Like, and it's like, like, and just catch it. Just walk in the back and, like, yeah, do some crazy funny. shit. But, like, it, it, I don't know if you saw the movie Catch Me If You Can. Yeah, like, no, I yeah. love that movie. But literally, like, I realized that, like, that is... I understand. Is, that's how it I is. I understand right. that's part. I mean, like, back in the day, they didn't have as much, like, they didn't have... Data tracking. They didn't have they, all those data tracking and social media, but, but, but like, it's scary it that you, that you have that. Or, like, I, I've been to um, a concert on... Uh, I had to film a concert in New Year's Eve, and, like, I found out the day before, and, like, whatever. And, like, show up with my camera, and, like, every... And this is in New, uh, in New York City. Every single... Uh, city block has a cop on each side kind of thing and I'm just walking with like a little press pass and each cop is like yeah it's cool and I have a bag now this has a camera in it now you don't know what I have in there yeah. but I'm just like media pass boop, and I'm walking yeah. by and I'm like they're not even checking the they just didn't check it as it went through and I was like oh this is all illusion of safety and yeah. I'm like okay cool and then I get to the, the venue and they're like oh yeah you could go boom and then it's like and I'm like back there with like the band and I'm like that pass that said media did a lot like it did did a lot Sometimes it's a diploma, and, I'm, bro. and i'm just like this is <laughs> crazy you know kind of thing um but like you know i'm not don't don't do anything crazy people don't do anything crazy <laughs> but like i'm just saying it's just interesting to seeing that you know like how um how do we distinguish like you you're meant to be in that room or not yeah. you know like uh, a lot of times even like it's funny like even on film sets like you want to just be in the room yeah. like kind of thing you could be the gaffer the head of lighting and like you're not in the room kind of thing yeah. and that's it and like um and that feels like a bad feeling because you're like oh but it's like i'm just doing lighting and it doesn't matter you know like i don't need to be there during the creative stuff or like with generation loss like i was like just doing like production assistant and like um you know acting and I remember I was in a creative, like, part of, like, a creative meeting because I was just sitting there and, like, I was, like, making sure the talent was okay. And the whole, whole, all the talent is, like, sitting there. These are, like, very famous people. They're all jamming, talking about what they're going to do for the script. And I was like, this is so cool. I'm so lucky to be in this room right now. I have nothing that I'm allowed to contribute <laughs> at all. But I could be here and, like, literally, like, absorb information and see how people interact and stuff like that and, like, you know, that type of thing. And it just was just such a cool experience like I'll remember for the rest of my life kind of thing you know and it's like you know um, it, it's 
it's such an interesting life, you know, and I'm, I really appreciate being able to talk about it uh, hey, man, with I'm you. Happy. I'm happy. Yeah. You're yeah. here, bro. Yeah. For real. You know, I hope um, that uh, I was honest enough about all my. Oh no, my. no. <laughs> you know, you we're, know. Uh, tell us a little bit about so the the name mm-hmm. of the film and where, where we're going for the festival. Oh yeah, so attachment theory uh, is in Peak Skill Films Festival on July 29th, uh, the sixth to seven thirty time slot. It's a Saturday. Um, I think it's twenty dollars to get in. You get a ticket. Um, you know, it, it's definitely a really cool movie, very unique, and also something that people should look into anyway to improve their relationships, you know, kind of thing. So, <laughs> you know, that whole thing. And uh, where can we find you on social media? Oh, uh, social media. So I'm only on Instagram. Um, I'm at Michael Fells Filmmaker. Doc, uh, Michael Fells Filmmaker. My website is uh, Michael Fells Filmmaker. Com. And to spell my name, it's M I C H A E L. F E L S. So, uh, that whole thing. So. Michael Fells, ladies and gentlemen, afternoon FM. It's a beautiful conversation. Yeah, man. Stay beautiful, people.